saying hey from West Virginia. Still lost. Okay, well, I'll tell you what's not lost. What is not lost is joke of the day because I know you're waiting for joke of the day because it is the best part of the day. Are you ready? Let's do this. So why is your nose in the middle of your face? Because it's the center. <laughs> center of your face. Okay, anyways, let's get on with our lesson for today, which is all about formulas. What we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to take some formulas and we're going to rearrange those formulas. And a lot of people get confused about how to rearrange formulas. Well, the easiest way to do it is to do exactly what I've got written here in this paragraph. And it says to solve an equation for a variable because that's actually what a formula is. It's just an equation. It's an equation that doesn't have a whole lot of numbers in it. You're used to equations where you only have one variable in it. Well, these are equations that have more than one variable in it. So, to solve that equation for a variable, when there are other variables in the equation, you pretend like all the other variables are numbers, and then you use normal algebra rules, which means we're going to do unto one side as we do unto the other, which also means that we are going to reverse our order of operations and kick them completely in reverse and do the opposite of what's been done to the variable already. And that's why it's so important to know those order of operations and be able to use them correctly because we're going to kick them in reverse. So let's take a look at these examples and I've got about six examples for us to take a look at. In each one of the examples we're going to solve for the specified variable. So take a look at this first formula that we've got. It says that we have c equals pi d. This happens to be the formula for the circumference of a circle and what we're going to do is solve for d. So what happens here is we pretend like everything else is a number and we get that one variable left by itself. Now what I like to do to remind myself, because there's so many variables in there, I get a little bit confused as to what was it I was going to get by itself. So I like to take a, a pen or a pencil or even a marker, I like to put a big box around what needs to be by itself. That makes it jump out at me and then I can go, oh, okay, this is what I have to get alone. This is what I have to isolate. So that now I'm going to use normal algebra rules, which say, okay, if I've already taken this d and I've multiplied it by that pi, what's the opposite of multiplying by pi? Exactly, dividing by pi. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide by pi here. And remember what you do on one side, you've got to do on the other side. That whole pan balance idea, your equation is a pan balance. And so in order to keep it all balanced out, you've got to do the same thing on both sides. So I'm going to take this side and divide it by pi as well. When I do these cancel out, I'm left with that D on this side all by itself like I wanted to happen. And on this side I have C divided by pi. And now that the D is by itself, I'm done. My job is finished because I got that variable completely by itself. All right, let's take a look at a few others. You know that I like to give you lots of examples to make sure you're really good at this. So this formula says I equals PRT. This happens to be the formula for simple interest, so any kind of uh, finance or any kind of business applications would use this formula for simple interest. And we're going to solve it for R. Now remember, what I like to do is I like to put a box around that variable that I want to get by itself so that it jumps out at me and I don't lose it in all the mess. So I'm going to put that box around this R right here. That means I need to get the P and the T away from the R. So I ask myself, if I knew what that R was, according to proper order of operations, what would I do to that R? Well, proper order of operations says I would multiply it by a P and then I would multiply it by a T. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse that. So instead of multiplying by that P, I'm going to divide by that P. And instead of multiplying by that T, I'm going to divide by that T. So I'm going to divide this side by the P as well as the T. That means I'm going to do the same thing here on the left side. Divide it by the P and the T as well. Remember, these will cancel and these will cancel. That will get that R by itself like I wanted. And on this side I have I divided by P as well as T. The whole idea being that the R is now by itself. So my job is done. All right, let's take a look at a couple more. Getting a little bit more challenging. Notice this formula says A equals 1 half BH, which happens to be the formula for the area of a triangle. That's not that important that you know that that's the area of a triangle. What is important is that you are told you need to solve that for H. 
So that means this H right here, I got to get it all by itself. I'm going to put that box around it so that it jumps out at me and I'm ready to go. Now, if I knew what the H was, I would use proper order of operations. Like if I knew that H was a 10, what would I do to that H first? Well, I would multiply it by that B, and then after that I would multiply it by a half. So I'm going to kick it in reverse. I'm going to reverse those order of operations. And the last thing that I said was dividing, or sorry, multiplying by a half. So I'm going to reverse that. So the opposite of multiplying by half is dividing by a half. But we need to be very careful here because look what happens. This works out just fine because the halves are going to cancel. But on this side, when I divide by a half, oh my goodness, look at that mess. That is what we call a complex fraction because it's complicated. It's complex. I'm not sure what to do with that thing. So I need to simplify this a little bit and make it easier to deal with. Think about this, guys. You are very good at fractions. Now, we've looked at fractions. We've, we've exhausted fractions. So we know what to do because we know that when we divide by a half, think about this. Dividing by a half is the same thing as doing what? Exactly. It's the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. In other words, multiplying by 2. So I'm going to go for the jugular. I'm going to make it cleaner. I'm going to make it faster. So instead of dividing by a half, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and multiply by 2 because multiplying by 2 is the same thing as dividing it by half. And remember, when I multiply those fractions, what do I do? Oh, yeah, there it is again, that gang symbol that says when you multiply fractions, you cancel on those diagonals, you cancel up and down, and then you shoot straight across. So what's going to happen here is these are going to cancel totally gone. But notice what happens when I multiply this side by 2, I have to multiply this side by 2 much cleaner. All I have now is just a 2a. Instead of that complicated complex fraction of a divided by 1 half that I wasn't quite sure what to do with. But now remember, my job is get that h by itself. It's not by itself yet because it's being multiplied by that b. So now I'm going to do the opposite of multiplying by b and I'm going to divide by b. And remember what that means is do the same thing on the other side. You have to be careful though, guys. You're dividing the entire side by B. Not just the A, not just the 2, but the entire side. I see a lot of people who will just divide maybe the 2 by B and get this. Or perhaps what they'll do is they'll just divide the A by the B and they'll get this. But you're dividing the entire side, both the 2 and the A as well. I don't want any of this stuff happening here. So what that leaves me with is 2A divided by B. Notice these cancel out over here, getting that H all by itself like I wanted to happen. So I know my job is done. There it is, rearranged and solved for that H. All right, let's take a look at one more, and then I got two more after that. So this formula says Y equals MX plus B. And with this formula, this is what we call the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line. And notice that, it, and, and again, it's not that big of a deal if you don't know that right now. Later you'll need to know that one, that that is the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line. This is not the formula for slope, because a lot of people will tell me that's the formula for slope. But the formula for slope is subtract your y's on the numerator, subtract your x's on the denominator. This is the slope-intercept form of the equation of a line. But what's really important right now is we need to be able to get this x totally and completely by itself. Now this one's a little bit complicated here. I got no numbers at all in this one. So what I have to do is I have to get all those other variables away from that x. So I'm going to think, okay, if I used proper order of operations, if I knew what that x was, let's say I knew that it was a 10. What would I do to that 10 first according to proper order of operations? Absolutely, I would multiply it by the m. Then what would I do after that? Oh yeah, I would add that b to it. So remember, I'm going to kick out order of operations in reverse, and I'm going to go backwards. The last thing that we said was add b. And if I'm going completely in reverse, that's the first thing I'm going to fix. So the opposite of adding that b would be to subtract b. So I'm going to subtract b from this side. And remember, that means I'm going to subtract b from the other side as well. What I do on one side, i got to do on the other. So that means I have a y minus b on the left, and on the right I've got that mx. Feeling pretty good. I've almost got the x by itself, but not quite yet. 
I got to get rid of that M that's sitting right there up against it. And remember, up against always means multiplication, so I need to reverse that multiplication. Absolutely, I need to divide by that M. So I'm going to divide this side by M. And remember, you're dividing the whole side by M. Not just the Y divided by the M, not just the B divided by the M, but the entire side divided by the M. So that gives me Y minus B divided by M equals X, because those M's will cancel. There it is. The X is completely by itself. Now, if you don't like that form, what you can do is you can take the numerator, each term in the numerator, and divide it by that M. So you would get Y divided by M minus B divided by M, and that will give you that X all by itself. Not really necessary. This is perfectly fine. Leave it alone. But if you need to separate it out, this is how you would separate it. I did want to point that out to you, though, because remember I said it's not just the Y divided by the M. Notice this, this is not right because the B is, as well should be divided by M. So this is not my answer. And I also said it's not just the B divided by the M. Because once again, notice the Y and the B both need to be divided by the M. So this is not the answer. Like I said, just take the side and divide it by that M, and that'll get you there to the right answer. Okay, let's try just a couple more here. I want to, you know I like for you guys to feel really comfortable with this, with a lot of examples. So let me just throw a couple more examples up here for us, and then I think that'll take care of it. All right, so the next one, the formula is... Um, C equals 5 ninths, parentheses, F minus 32, which happens to be the formula for converting from Fahrenheit to Celsius. Converting those two measures of temperature. Not converting from Celsius to Fahrenheit, because you would typically plug into the F, do all that order of operations and spit out the C. So it's converting Fahrenheit to Celsius. But the important thing, like I said, is we want to be able to rearrange this. We want to solve for that F. So solving for that F, remember what I like to do is I like to put that box around the letter that I want to get by itself. So I'm going to put my box around this F right here. And I'm going to say, okay, if I knew what that F was, let's call it a 10. If I knew that the F was a 10, according to proper order of operations, what would I do to that 10 first? Absolutely. PEMDAS says do the parentheses first. So I would take the 10, I would subtract a 32. After that, I would multiply by 5 ninths. So if we're kicking those order of operations completely in reverse, I'm going to undo in opposite order. So the last thing that we said was multiply by 5 ninths. That's the first thing that we're going to fix. And like we discussed before, that does mean dividing by 5 ninths but we said, oh my goodness, that's going to create this horrible, horrible complex fraction that we don't want to deal with. And we said that dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. So I'm going to flip it, and I'm going to go for the jugular. It makes it cleaner. It makes it faster. So instead of dividing by 5 ninths, instead what I'm going to do is I'm just going to multiply by its reciprocal 9 fifths. Because there again, when we multiply those fractions, remember that gang symbol that says cancel in those diagonals. The 9's cancel, the 5's cancel. That gives me just an F minus 32. But more importantly, much cleaner that when we multiply the left side by 9 fifths, it's clean. And I get a 9 fifths C. Now remember that C is over a 1. So if you don't like the C sitting beside the 9 fifths in that format, then you're going to write it as 9C over 5, like this. But either, either uh, way of writing it is completely fine. I just have a habit of letting that C sit out front. Um, but either way, just don't put that C on the bottom with the 5. Do not put it in the denominator. That's definitely not right. But here again, not quite done yet because the F is not by itself yet. So we're going to reverse what's been done to that F. It is being, as 32 is being subtracted from it. So the opposite of subtracting 32 is adding 32. I'm going to add a 32 here, add a 32 here. Keeping in mind, I'm adding 32 to the side. I'm not adding 32 to just the C. I'm not adding 32 to just the 9 fifths. For that matter, if I had it written as 9C over 5, 
I'm not just adding the 32 to the 9C. That's where you're going to be careful. That 32 is being added to the side. So I'm going to get a 9 fifth C plus 32 equals F. And there the F is by itself. Or, like I said before, if you really want to write it as 9C over 5, that's perfectly fine. But what would happen with your answer is that 9C over 5 would turn into 9, uh, sorry, not 95, excuse me, 9C over 5. But again, I'm adding 32 to the side, not just that numerator, not just that denominator, but the entire side. Either one of those is perfectly fine. All right, one last one. Let's take a look at it, and this one's a challenging one. This one throws people off pretty good. So let me clear this out of here and give us plenty of space to work with this one. I'm telling you, if you can do this last one, you can do just about anything with rearranging formulas. This is a doozy. This formula says A equals one-half H parentheses B1 plus B2. Do you know what that's the formula for? It's okay if you don't. This is the formula for the area of a trapezoid, not a triangle. Very similar to a triangle because remember, the triangle one was one-half one base times height. So if you take a triangle that looks like this, and then you make two bases, it looks like this, suddenly your triangle turns into a trapezoid. So they're very similar formulas in terms of one-half H, but because the trapezoid has two bases, we're going to add the two bases together and then do the multiplication. That's neither here nor there at this point. What really is important is that we want to solve for B1. There's where the challenge is. I want to get this B1 right here all by itself. Notice that it is buried within the parentheses. That's what makes this challenging. But we've got this because we know what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like that B1 is, we'll call it a 10, and then we're going to say, well, if we knew it was a 10, according to proper order of operations, what would we do? Remember, PEMDA says go inside that parentheses first. So we would take that 10, we would add the B2, then we would start multiplying, and we'd multiply by the H, and we would multiply by the half. Remember, that's proper order of operations. We're going to kick it in reverse. So we're going to go backwards of what we just said. And the last thing that we said was multiply by half. So to undo multiplication by half, that's right, you remember, you're good. We said it's quicker, it's easier, it's faster, it's cleaner. We're going to go for the jugular, and we're not going to divide by half. We're going to multiply by its reciprocal, which is 2. Because those are going to cancel, and we'll multiply this side by 2, giving us a 2a equal to h, parentheses is still there, b1 plus b2. But I'm getting closer, because at least that half is out of the way. Now, remember, I like to put those boxes around what I want to get by itself so it doesn't get buried and I don't lose it. That's what I want to get by itself. So, remembering this idea of kicking those order of operations in reverse, the second to last thing we had said was multiply by h. So we're going to reverse multiplying by h, which would be dividing by h. We're going to divide this side by h. We're going to divide this side by h. That cancels these, left with a b1 plus a b2. And on this side, now I've got a 2a divided by h. Remember, I told you before, divide the entire side by h. Not just the a, not just the 2, but the entire side. So now what I'm going to do is go, okay, here's that b1 that I want by itself. How do I get it by itself? I've got to undo this adding B2. So to reverse that, I'm going to subtract the B2 from this side. And remember, subtract it from the entire side. Not just the numerator, not just the denominator, but from the entire side. So that'll give me a 2A over H minus that B2. Aha, the B1 is by itself. Feeling pretty good. Now, if you don't like this format and you want it all together as basically one big fraction, that's okay. But remember, what's going to happen here is this, when you put it over that H, it needs to be H times B2 over H. So that when those H's cancel, let me write that down for you, we're going to have H times B2 over H. Because when these H's cancel, that gets that B2 by itself. And when you do that, now you can put them together with one common denominator, and you would have 2a minus hb2 over 1h. 
There we go. If you really want it with one denominator. But good grief, people. We just made that way more complicated than it needed to be. And that's what a lot of people do. Make it way more complicated than it needs to be. Just simply subtract that B2 from the side and call it done. You're done right there. That's perfect. It's beautiful. Leave it alone. So I hope this helps with being able to rearrange formulas and being able to solve them for a specified variable. Remember, the whole idea is this. Pretend like all the others are numbers and just say, okay, if they were numbers, if I knew what that number was for the variable I want to get by itself, what would proper order of our operations have me do? And kick that in reverse and just do the opposite every single time in reverse order. So I hope that helps. Have a great day.